Let the church say amen. amen. He won't. He won't fail you. The Lord has set the atmosphere more than you may even realize. He set the atmosphere to let you know he will not, cannot fail you. Amen. Amen. We give honor to God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Spirit. Uh, we give honor to Pastor Carlisle. Let's give him a round of applause. Amen. This great man of, of Lisbon. Amen. Amen. We not only bless uh, Pastor Carlisle, we bless all the men and women of God, uh, all the uh, standard bearers, uh, all those that carry the word of the Lord, yes. and to everyone in their respective places. Amen. Thank you so much for the invite. Yes, sir. We recognize that you could have deviated. You didn't have to invite us. Amen. So we're thankful to be here. Amen. Amen. Happy anniversary, Mizba. <laughs> Amen. Happy 135. <laughs> Amen. Happy anniversary. Church, we have a word for the body the church as a whole, and you as an individual. And we pray, we pray that the word falls on good ground. All right. Sowing seeds that will reap a harvest yeah. into eternal life. Yeah. Yeah. And that will propel you into a stronger faith. All right. And into the perfect will of God that will last a lifetime. All right. In other words, we pray that this is a generational word All right. that will not only bless you, uh -huh. but bless those that are connected to you. Yes, bless those that are connected with you. Yes, All right. All right. Let us pray. Most heavenly, most gracious God, our Father, we come to preach in a place that we've never preached before. Father, we pray that your spirit will rest heavy in this place. That it will heal, set free, save, and deliver. Yes, Lord. That it will give somebody courage yes. and strength yes, Lord. for the task that lies ahead. Uh -huh. Now, Father, we pray that you would give us preaching power. Yes, Lord. That your word will go forth with both power, clarity, and might. Father, we pray that you let the words of my mouth and the yeah. meditation of my heart allow it to be acceptable in thy sight. In sight. My Lord, my strength, yeah. and my Redeemer. And the body of Christ says with me, amen. amen. If you have your Bibles, we ask that you return with us to Hebrews 13, All right. 5 through 6. Hebrews 13, 5 through 6. And if it's okay, we're going to ask that you stand as we read the word. We know that standing won't get you in and sitting won't keep you out, but we just want to make sure we reverence God's word. Amen. Hebrews 13, 5 through 6. Uh -huh. When you have it, say amen. amen. If you need a minute, say give me a minute. Hebrews 13, 5 through 6 says, let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. So that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. And I will not fear what man shall do unto me. You may rest your seat. If we were going to title this sermon tonight, we titled it as, He Ain't Going to Start with me all right protocol has been established church i want you to take a moment and write down the sermon subject somewhere i don't care where you write it at but write it down somewhere he ain't gonna start with me all right we won't be long some of us have worked all day and have to go back tomorrow and some of us and we're mindful of that 
So we'll be just long enough to do his will, speak a word, and go. Church, I need us to understand that we serve a God who cannot fail. God had already given me the message uh, before we came to preach Sunday and the choir got up and sang the song they sung tonight. And I asked them to sing it again tonight. God was already lining the word up for you, 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 and you. So if you're here tonight, the word is for you. All right, all right. Bring it on, bring it on. Yes, sir. We serve a God who cannot fail. Uh -huh. I mean, he simply can't fail. That's right. If God was a coach, he'd be a coach who never lost a game. That's right. That's right. If God was a lawyer, he'd be a lawyer who never lost a case. Uh -huh. If he were a doctor, he'd be a doctor who never lost. I mean, he's never lost anything. As a matter of fact, he neither slumbers nor sleeps. He don't need a break. He don't need a timeout. He don't need a power break. He don't need a nap. He don't need nothing. He's just God and God all alone and God by himself. And he cannot, cannot fail. Let me help you. So I want you to grasp uh, the fact that he never fails uh -huh. is just not in his nature to fail. Uh -huh. It's not in his nature to fall. It's not in his nature to stumble. He cannot fail. fail. Uh -huh. Let me help you. Yep. Remember when he, uh, he freed Israel from bondage uh -huh. down in Egypt and Pharaoh is hot on their trail uh -huh. uh, and they're stuck between the Red Sea and Pharaoh's army. Uh -huh. Y'all remember that? Yeah, yeah, you, you remember that they were stuck between a rock and a hard place. Has anybody ever been stuck between a rock and a hard place? Has anybody ever found themselves with their back up against the wall? They were stuck between a rock and a hard place. And the Bible says, the Bible says, uh, when Moses frees them and they leave Egypt, they get stuck between the Red Sea and Pharaoh. And the Bible says that Moses takes his rod and taps the sea and the sea splits in two heaps. And the Bible says that the, the Israelites walk over on dry ground. I don't know if anybody has ever stepped in mud or some soggy water or some soggy dirt, but it's kind of hard to walk in water when or mud when it's uh, 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 wet. But the Bible says they walked over on dry ground. And the Bible says he took the heaps of water and stood them up. On both sides. Until Pharaoh's army came and washed them away. Then there's the three Hebrew boys. We're talking about a guy who never fails. Uh -huh. Then there's the three Hebrew boys. You know the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Yeah. You know how uh, uh, they refused to bow down uh, when Nebuchadnezzar uh, made that golden image. And when he makes the golden image, they, don't, they, don't, they won't bow down to it. And when he, when he plays the music, they don't bow down. And so they throw him in the fiery furnace. Yeah. And the Bible says that the furnace was turned up seven times hotter. Yeah. And the Bible says uh, Nebuchadnezzar got his strongest men to bind them up. The fire was so hot that some of them burnt up. Yeah. You know the story. And then the Bible says, oh, Nebuchadnezzar went down there, pulled that little peephole back and said, didn't we throw three in there? They said, yeah, but, but he said, I see four. And one of them looked like the son of man. I'll come out and tell you, you serve a God who cannot fail. All right. All right now. Church God's never lost a case. Come on down here, Hannah. You know Hannah. She was married to Elk. Uh-huh. 
Hannah was barren, couldn't have children. Uh, and, and she had a rival by the name of Peniah. And Peniah would rub in Hannah's face the fact that she had something that Hannah couldn't have. You know those kind of people that don't mind rubbing what they got in your face? Well, it's because of this, oh, Hannah found herself in a dark place. She found herself in a state of depression. And the Bible said she went down to the church house one night. No matter how much Elkner tried to help her, how much communion he gave her extra, no matter how much he said, she still was a little sad. And the Bible says she went down to the church and prayed. And old Samuel was standing by in a corner and told her this time next year. Then there's a story of the Shumanite woman who built the extra room for the man of God when he came through and he stayed with her and her husband. And because she was so kind, the man of God, old Elijah, asked her, what do you, what you need? She said, I, I'm fine, my Lord, I don't, I don't need nothing. He told her this time next year, you will conceive and bear a son. And the Bible says that that next year she conceived. And the Bible says somewhere uh, down the road, maybe four or five, six years later, the little boy was out in the field with his daddy. And the Bible says he got the feeling bad. And the Bible says the daddy took the little boy back into the mama's house. And, and I could imagine in my spiritual imagination, the mama took that baby and held him in her lap and did her best to nurse him back to health. Whatever she had to do, that mama did. You know how mamas couldn't be. And I would imagine she just rocked him all night long. And then uh, at some point, life came out the baby. All right, Dad. All right, Dad. The Bible says the mama carried the baby up into the man's room, uh -huh. the man of God room who she had built, and laid the baby down on the bed of the man of God. Got back down and told her husband to get her a horse and buggy. Right. And she got it prepared and struck out and went and found the man of God. And the man of God came back, uh -huh. went into his room, right. laid on top of the baby, right. breathed the breath of life in the baby, walked all around a time or two. Breathe the, breath, uh, breathe the breath of life back in the baby. And the Bible says the baby came back alive and he took him back. Gave him to the mama. Dr. <laughs> gave him to his mama. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I've given you four examples. Uh -huh. All from the Old Testament. Yeah. Uh -huh. Now I have one more left from the new. All right. But before we go there, let's show you how it relates to you. I gave you four examples of the Lord not failing. Four examples of times where we see God did not fail. Our sermon text is Hebrews 13, five and six. In the B portion of verse 5, I want you to note that it says, and I want your spiritual focus to catch on, on that part where he says, I'll never leave thee. You walking with me, you walking, you walking with me. Then in verse 6, if we were to paraphrase it, verse 6 says, take comfort. So I'll never leave thee nor forsake thee. Then it says, take comfort and be encouraged. And confidently say, the Lord is my helper. Yeah. The Lord is my helper in the time of need. When I'm in need or when I'm in trouble, I, I can't count on man. I can count on the Lord. He is my helper in my time of need. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. And it goes on, he says, I will not be afraid of what man can do unto me. Uh -huh. Let's go home, man. Church, when I say God cannot fail, 
I mean, God cannot, cannot. fail. I come out to tell you, he cannot fail. He will not fail. He will not let you down. Uh -huh. yes, sir. He will not fail. That's right. And he will not start with you. All right. Uh -huh. That's right. In other words, he will not fail you. Uh -huh. Each biblical example given is for folk facing similar situations, similar problems, similar circumstances. For example, the Red Sea is for those of us who feel trapped, trapped between a rock and a hard place. For those of us who are not only trapped, but feel like we have no way to turn. It's one thing to be trapped between a rock and a hard place, but it's on a different level when you're trapped between a rock and a hard place and you can't go to the left or to the right. There's somebody in the house that feels like you're trapped between a rock and a hard place. I don't know if it's in your marriage. I don't know if it's in your situation. I don't know where it is, but you feel what? Trapped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yes, sir. Between your situation or your circumstances. Uh -huh. Feel like there's no way out. Yeah, yeah. Three Hebrew boys. Well, they represent for those of us who try and do right, uh -huh. yeah. who try and live right, who try to walk and talk right and be right, who try to stand right, uh -huh. who try to continue to do right. But it seems like you catch hell on every side. Yeah. Yeah. Catch hell this way, catch hell that way. Don't matter. As long as you're trying to do for the Lord, it seems like you just keep catching. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh-huh. Break it up. Oh, it was Hannah. Hannah's for those of us who are depressed. Uh-huh. It's real. Sad. It's real. Broken. Yes, sir. We're struggling in our mind. It's real. Yes, your mind is racing. You sleep uh -huh. all night, but your mind is racing. It's real. You wake up sad. You go to bed sad. You go just depressed. Yes, sir. Santa, Hannah is for those of us who are struggling mentally in our mind. Uh -huh. And then the Shumanite. The Shumanite woman is for anyone who believed God for something. Uh -huh. And then lost it. Yeah. Or was taken away. Or better yet, it died. Uh -huh. Not physically speaking. But rather, it looked like there was no hope, That's right. That's no right. chance, no yeah. future. Yeah. Yeah. All your hope was just dashed away, uh. taken away. I said, write the sermon subject down. And if you haven't, here's your chance to do so. The subject was, he ain't going to start with me. All right. If you ain't got it. Let me help you. All right. All right. We establish we established that God cannot fail. fail. And then we gave you four biblical examples of God not failing. Uh -huh. So if God did not fail Israel, uh -huh. if he didn't fail the three Hebrew boys, All right. if he didn't fail Hannah, uh -huh. and he didn't fail the Shumanite woman, uh -huh. then you better know, baby, he ain't going to start... So you take that word and you hide it in your heart, hide it in your mind, hide it in your soul, hide it in your inner man. Uh -huh. Things get off course. When they get tough and rough, uh -huh. yeah. when things start shaking and you feel like you can't make it, you say in your inner man, God cannot fail. Right. You got a mirror in here. You got a mirror. Let's just pretend it's a mirror. Uh -huh. The next time you feel down and out, the next time you feel saddened, the next time you feel like you can't make it, I dare you to find you a mirror, look in it and say, God cannot fail and 
and he won't start with I know I know I know my marriage is on the rocks uh -huh. I, I, I know it, it seems like we're not gonna make it uh -huh. I, I know my body is ailing I know, I know I'm sick I know my pockets are turned inside out ain't, ain't got enough money to pay the next bill don't know where my help is coming from but what I do know is I serve a God who is great and mighty who sets high and looks low, who's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that I may ask or think. And he cannot fail. And he will not start with me. <laughs> My body is ailing. But I serve a God who cannot fail. He's not about to start with me. So therefore, my home is blessed. My situation is blessed. My circumstance is blessed. My family is blessed. My husband is blessed. My wife is blessed. My son is blessed. My daughter is blessed. My career is blessed. My ministry is blessed. My marriage is blessed. My health is blessed. My mental capacity is blessed. My finances are blessed. Emotionally, spiritually, I'm blessed. I hear you, Reverend Hayes. I hear you. I hear you. I hear you, Reverend Hayes. But how, how can you be so sure? Well, I, I'm sure because I saved my best example for last. You'll find that somewhere in the New Testament. Either in Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. And that's the resurrection of Jesus Christ. You know how they beat Jesus all night long. You know how they hauled him from Judgment Hall of Judgment Hall. Uh -huh. You know how they crucified him yes, on Calvary's cross. Uh -huh. Then you know how he died. Yeah, he died. They put him in a borrowed tomb. Uh -huh. What you have to understand, you, you have to understand that the enemy thought he had defeated God. Yes. He thought God had failed. Uh -huh. But I come by on my way back to First African Baptist Church to tell some and remind others that God cannot fail. And if he didn't fail Jesus, as Jesus lay in a borrowed tomb, three days and three nights, if he didn't fail Jesus, I know he won't fail you. Stand all across the house. We're not gonna start with you. Doors of the church are open. Thank you so much. The doors of the church are open. We were already said he hung, he bled, and he died. Will there be one on tonight? Will there be one? Is there anybody in need of prayer? Is it all right if I pray? Can I pray? I'm not going to ask you to come because God knows what you need better than I know. But if you have a need from the Lord, if there are some situations in your life where you feel like you're not going to make it, we come to tell you that there's hope. And I'm just going to ask that you bow your head with us, close your eyes. Father, we pray on tonight. 
for every man, woman, boy, and girl under the sound of my voice. We know you as a healer. We know you as a way maker. Father, we don't have to do anything for our outside show. Everything's done on the inside. So, Father, you know where we are. You know what we stand in need of. Father, I pray on tonight for every man, every woman, every boy, every girl under the sound of my voice who needs you to step in. Father, I pray that you step in and step in mightily. Even, not just here in the church, but for anybody who may watch it or uh, uh, pre-record it, who needs a blessing, who needs a healing, whose marriage is on the rocks, whose children are going astray, whose husband is left out, their wife is left out. No matter where they are, Father, I pray that you bless them. Keep them covered under your blood. Let them know, God, that you cannot fail. And you will not start with them. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let the body of Christ say amen. Let's give the Lord a round of applause. Amen. Thank you, God, for not failing. And thank you for not starting with me. Amen.